Good morning and welcome to our live stream of our Palm Sunday celebration. Uh, we have entered into this holiest of weeks and uh, very unusual Lent and Holy Week. Unfortunately, of course, we are uh, just uh, myself and Deacon Bill, Father Joe, and Father Matthew uh, gathered here in the church to uh, celebrate this, um, this very special day of the um, um, Passion of our Lord when we begin to reflect on the mystery of Jesus' suffering and how he entered into Jerusalem, this procession. You know, in the newspaper uh, just yesterday, I believe, uh, we heard about a procession. Some of the school teachers from one of the schools did a parade in the streets and and, uh, and it was kind of a, uh, a procession of um, just greeting the students and uh, telling them how much they missed them. And it was a beautiful uh, gesture, of course, for the students and the teachers who were separated from each other. And, um, um, but it was, of course, uh, kind of a bittersweet procession, a bittersweet parade. And you know, when you think about it, that's what Palm Sunday is. It's a bittersweet procession when Jesus enters into Jerusalem and uh, so our procession today will be a little bit uh, uh, bittersweet and uh, kind of sad because, of course, we uh, do not have all of our ministers, all of the men and women who serve uh, in the liturgy and all of our community. And so, and yes, we do miss you very much. And that is why we are uh, praying especially for you. And we will celebrate now this uh, celebration of the Passion of our Lord Palm Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Since the beginning of Lent, we have been preparing ourselves by prayer and fasting to enter into these holiest of days, the Holy Week and the Easter uh, Triduum. And uh, today we commemorate the uh, entrance of Jesus into the, the city of Jerusalem, where he would give his life for our salvation. We begin our celebration asking God to bless these palms. Uh, we will bless the palms, and uh, of course the palms will not be able to be distributed until uh, sometime later, in a few weeks or months, whenever we're able uh, to distribute palms to the faithful, um, to remember this um, holy week and this uh, very strange year uh, of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So we begin with the blessing of the palms. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through <clears throat> him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The Master has need of them then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter, daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? 
And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I have not, or I have my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord is my help, therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Our response is, 
My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads, they relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him, if he loves him. My, my God, God, my God, why, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me, a pack of evil doors closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet, and I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my venture or vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me, O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, my God, God, why have you abandoned me? I proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, my God, my God, God. why have you abandoned me? Second reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. In every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. 
The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, I. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So, you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray, that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still weeping? Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. 
Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priest and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword shall perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide for me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Through many false witnesses, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This, this man, man is dead. I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, one of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, 
and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is it that what is done to us? Look to it yourself. Fleeing the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to, de to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with the price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They, said, they answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had scourged Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him off of his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. As they placed over his head the written charge against him, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You would have destroyed the temple and rebuilt it in three days. Save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. 
So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the man with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. Then Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb, The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter while still alive said, After three days, I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest the disciples Come and steal him and say to the people, He has risen, for he has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, we have just uh, read and you have heard the long version of the longest reading possible in the church calendar. There's three year cycle, and this is the year A, which is the Gospel of Matthew, which is the longest one, the longest version of the reading of the Passion of Jesus. So uh, it doesn't get any longer than that. And so uh, 
Um, congratulations. I don't know if you were standing at home during that uh, long reading, but um, we have, uh, uh, we've been studying actually the Gospel of Matthew this year. During the um, uh, year we have had some Bible studies and the Gospel of Matthew is this, uh, this Gospel which um, uh, is the longest and it has all the details especially uh, precisely about um, this idea of going up to Jerusalem. There's a lot of um, emphasis on going into the city. Jewish men three times a year were required to enter into Jerusalem for certain feast days every year and Jesus was a good Jew following the law of the Old Testament and he uh, went every year and so um, Jesus was um, entering into Jerusalem and entering into that temple and uh, the Gospel of Matthew therefore is the, the gospel of, of the temple and of the holy city of Jerusalem. It emphasizes that many, many times. And also, we always hear that the Gospel of Matthew is the Gospel of the Kingdom, the Kingdom Gospel. Constantly, uh, Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew uh, is quoted as, you know, speaking of the Kingdom of God or the Kingdom of Heaven, and that Jesus is the King. And perhaps you noticed in that long reading how many times you can count the number of times that um, the word king or the word kingdom uh, or um, you know they uh, they called him the Christ which is a word that means anointed or king as well um, uh, the, uh, the soldiers when they were beating him and whipping him and spitting upon him they they said Christ um, you know prophesy who struck you and they said hail king of the Jews they made fun of him they ridiculed him and also on the cross if you are the Christ Come down from the cross and, uh, and above the cross the sign the letters saying uh, this is the king of the Jews Pontius Pilate himself the governor uh, representative of the Roman Empire that dominated the whole world acknowledged that Jesus is the king so Jesus is this king and he came into the city of Jerusalem he was born to go there. He was born to enter into the city because Jerusalem was the city of the king. It was the city of David. David, the first great king of Israel. It was the king's city. And the temple also was a place not just for the priests. It, the, the temple was also a place for the king. Um, it's interesting as we study the temple to know that uh, uh, it was a place for the presence of God behind the curtain, the curtain that tore uh, at the moment of his death. The, the Holy of Holies, behind the curtain was the presence of God. But on the right hand of God, to the right side, as you look at the temple, is the basilica. There was a giant basilica for the king. So the king's throne was literally at the right hand of God. And of course, this is a beautiful image of the, the theocracy of, of Israel, of the people of God. And the fact that Jesus, you know, came into his city. This is his city. This is his temple. This is his throne. This is his place. And so Jesus has a right to come in, to come into his city. And he was honored by the crowds. The crowds waved branches and palms, and they cried out, Hosanna in the highest. They proclaimed him as king. And uh, these were all quotations from, from the book of Isaiah, from the book of Psalms, from Zechariah. The, the things that Jesus did were prophesied that he would enter into his city uh, as a king. But the prophecies um, spoke of a, a king entering, as it says in the book of Zechariah, uh, on a donkey, humble, meek, riding on, a, on an ass, on a donkey. Uh, Jesus was humble. So he was a, a king, but he was a humble king. During the long reading, uh, it wasn't too hard for me because I didn't have too many speaking parts. My priests and deacons had to do more of the work because Jesus was silent. The great king was humble, and he spoke a few things. Yes, when he was 
under oath, ordered by the high priest. He obeyed to say what he, who he was. He said, yes, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and seated at the right hand of the power. Um, and so this ancient prophecy from the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 7, that Jesus is the, the great Messiah King who would come, who would be a divine figure seated at the right hand of the power. Jesus basically said, yes, I'm the one. And the high priest tore his garments and said he has blasphemed. He has said that he is the Messiah, the, that he is God. And so they, they put him to death. They also put him to death because of another thing that he had said. Jesus said, um, uh, destroy this temple and I will raise it up on, in three days. So that was kind of a, a crime, of course, threatening, kind of like a hate crime against the Jews, you might say, that uh, Jesus would say something like that, that uh, um, uh, the temple would be destroyed. Uh, but Jesus, as John's Gospel points out, was saying, indicating that he, his body is the new temple. And he was talking about his body. Destroy this temple, and I will raise it up on three, in three days. This is Holy Week. It's not just one, uh, it's not just Palm Sunday, then go home and kind of wait for Easter Sunday. Uh, no, during the whole week, we celebrate the different things that happen, the different things that um, um, uh, Jesus went through. The Last Supper on Thursday, we will celebrate on Thursday evening. Then Good Friday, uh, the Passion, all of these things that happen um, uh, to Jesus. Uh, Jesus uh, spent himself during these uh, holy days, and we are going to uh, be reenacting that. We're going to be spending uh, that time uh, with the Lord, and um, we will gather and continue to celebrate uh, these days as we um, as we see Jesus giving his life, having his temple destroyed. We are grateful that God will rebuild his temple. In the Gospel of Matthew, the whole point of the Gospel of Matthew is that yes, that temple will be destroyed. Jesus predicted the temple would be destroyed. The old law, the old religion of Israel would pass away, but a new law, a new kingdom, a new temple, a new Israel, a new people of God would rise up. And that, of course, is the church. Jesus builds a new temple. Jesus builds up a new home for us. Um, all of us are stuck in our homes, and it's, uh, it's uh, kind of hard to be in your home, but there's nothing, there's no place like home. It's nice to know that life is a journey, a procession, a pilgrimage, uh, but it's not going to be a perpetual pilgrimage. There's a, there's a destination. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a, a goal. There's a, a place that is prepared for us. And that is that home that God uh, prepared, which is, of course, the church, the body of Christ, which we enter into when we come into the church, when we receive Jesus, the body of Christ, uh, we are uh, united to his body and, um, and his blood. Those powerful words that we just heard in the gospel, I will build it up in three days. This week, there's going to be three days, Thursday, Friday, and Holy Saturday night. The, the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, there's the triduum, the three days. I will build it up in three days. Please pray and join us. Let's not let this holy week, this triduum, pass by uh, without um, acknowledging it, uh, because these are the three days in which, during which Jesus built up his church. He established his, this home this home for the people of God, for the family of God. This morning I woke up and I, the first thing that crossed my mind was that it's kind of sad that, that Lent is almost over. Holy Week is almost over and pretty soon in a couple of days the Easter will be over and, and I kind of thought that was sad. You know, Catholics love Lent and Good Friday. We almost love it more than, than Easter, uh, this time of, of meditating on the beautiful love of Christ who gave his life for us. Uh, but we should also realize that, um, that Easter is something wonderful to celebrate. Easter, uh, and the Easter season is longer than Lent. 
it's uh, s uh, seven weeks rather than just this uh, um, 40 days or five weeks of, of Lent. So the, uh, the Easter time uh, is what is prepared for us. And, and there is hope. And hopefully in the next uh, 40 days or the next few weeks or months, there will be an end to all of this coronavirus pandemic and we will have new hope and be able to celebrate joyfully uh, the Easter, the salvation, uh, and the, the great gift that the Lord gives us in providing uh, a home uh, for all nations, for all peoples, a place where we can experience his love and salvation. Catholic faith that gathers us in his name. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We lift up our prayers and intercessions to our Father, praying for ourselves, our church, and our world. For the church throughout the world, that all who celebrate these holy days will be renewed in mind and spirit, and that God will raise up vocations in the church. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will receive the Easter sacraments, and for all who have been responsible for their formation, that they will be blessed abundantly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern, that they will exercise authority with goodness and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For God's blessings upon all, including Maria Elena Navarro de Delgadillo and Celi Baca for celebrating birthdays. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children and young people suffering from child abuse, that as we celebrate National Child Abuse Prevention Month, we will strengthen our commitment to protect the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, including all affected by the coronavirus, that they will experience the healing power of Jesus, God's suffering servant, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, especially those who are alone, and for those who have died, including Linda Umbe, Ismael Estrella, Sr., Gloria Libre, Isagani Libre, Vincente Nahoya, Jose Celestina Abrigo, Sr., Father Patrick H. Curran, Michael James Herrera, and all who have died from the coronavirus, that they will know God's unending love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
loving Father, hear the prayers that we offer and place now upon the altar of Jesus Christ, your Son, who died for us, but rose again and lives and reigns as King forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The mystery of this water and wine that we come to share in the beginning with Christ, to humble himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual dinner. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, 
he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession. In your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us.
us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Amis
makes the heart grow fonder, and we look forward to uh, once again coming home, coming back to the home that Christ built for us, and he built it up, this temple, this, his body was built up in three days, and so do uh, please uh, celebrate with us these three days that are coming, uh, the triduum uh, of the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We uh, thank you for all your prayers and support, uh, we have a special message on our website regarding the uh, great need that we do have for your generosity. If you can uh, donate and um, support the church uh, in various ways by sending um, donations because we'd like to keep the um, uh, ministers working, working at home, doing uh, the um, projects and calling and responding to needs as best we can. Uh, so please um, support us uh, with your prayers and also financial support. God bless all of you, and I thank my brother priest, and we ask the Lord to bless all of you and your family. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration is ended, so as we continue sheltering in place, let us continue sharing the love of Jesus with one another. Thank Thanks be to God. God.
Love.